Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and I bid you a very warm welcome to the Friars Roast, Don Rickles. For those of you who are joining us for the first time and have never attended one of these craft roasts, I might tell you a brief word about the Friars. We're a fraternal organization established, I understand, Milton told me, in 1914. And uh, based on the concept of mutual interests, friendship, and most importantly of all, that you get your dues up on time every year. <laughs> now, in the past, the Friars... I could be watching jackpot bowling and I have to be here. <laughs> in the past, the Friars Club has honored such great luminaries as Al Jolson, George M. Cohan, Irving Berlin, and tonight, Don Rickles. <laughs> Which should give you some indication of the deterioration of this club. <laughs> During... Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna be easy tonight, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, during this roast tonight, the gentlemen on our dais will come up here to this podium and they will pay tribute to our guest of honor. Now, for those of you who have been with us before, I hope you realize that all of these remarks are made in the spirit of good fun, mutual admiration, and affection. We're suspending these conditions tonight <laughs> because of the nature of our guest. Before you meet the first speaker, I have a few personal observations to make. <laughs> You want to sit out here? <laughs> Rickles got his early start in show business as a heckler at telethons. <laughs> I don't know whether you know this or not, but Don didn't get married until late in life because he felt that marriage would jeopardize his career working gay bars. <laughs> I have a warm spot in, my, spot in my heart, or spart. <laughs> I have several things in my heart. Uh, spart has to be one of them. Say the, say but, the secret word and win a tech. I, uh, oh, you'll be dynamite at the end. <laughs> this is an indication of your humor tonight, is it? No, I remember with fond memories the many quiet evenings that we've spent together. I only wish they hadn't been on my show. <laughs> I, and then it was just... Just a year and a half ago that ABC scored the programming coup of the year. <laughs> the Don Rickles television show. His manager, one of the most perceptive managers in our business, Mr. Joe Scandori, said it couldn't miss. <laughs> Mr. Scandori, you might remember, was also a lookout at Pearl Harbor. <laughs> was a... Uh... Actually, it wasn't Don's fault that the show went off the air. The competition was brutal. Uh, Channel 13 at that time was running a documentary uh, called The Phillips Screwdriver, A Tool for Our Time. <laughs> but Don, some of your friends are here tonight. Don Adams could not be here. And I, I can say this, I think, and Don might back me up on this, that Don Adams and I are probably the two closest friends that Rickles has. And neither of us can stand him. Milton Burrow. Good night, all. <laughs> has been the model for countless comedians, and I'm proud to admit that I was not one of them. Uh, actually, I can think of no one more appropriate for this occasion. No two people in show business probably have more in common than Burrow and Rickles. <laughs> and they should both resent that comparison. <laughs> But the comparison really is kind of unavoidable. The same brashness, the same highly developed insensitivity. They're really so much alike. Bro could actually be Rickle's father. He, he, no, he's old enough. He's also careless enough. <laughs> if you're welcome, please. Mr. Television, Milton Burrow. Thank you very much, Johnny. That was a very wonderful introduction. I needed that introduction like Hermione Gingold needs the pill. <laughs> Seeing this tonight, I don't know if it's a testimonial for Rickles or a mercy booking for Youngman. <laughs> Ha! 
Danny, when you, <laughs> when you get home tonight, how are you going to explain to your wife that Chet Hunter got bigger laughs than you did? <laughs> I'm, only kid- I'm only kidding, Andy. I'm- Someday you're going to find yourself, but it's not worth looking for. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I must say, I, uh, I, uh, I enjoyed Dick Cavett, and I heard that he used to write jokes for Johnny. Now Dick has his own show, and believe me, Johnny, he's doing you more good where he is now. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We understand. When you're number three, you try harder. Am I allowed to ad lib with you? Yeah. You can, sir. I'll check my brains. We'll start even. Go ahead. Where, uh... What, baby? Where would you find a small enough check room? Oh, yeah? <laughs> and George C. Scott, you were very, very funny. Did you ever think of teaming up with Mom's Mabley? <laughs> <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, enough about, enough about these stars. I didn't come here to talk a lot about these talented people. I came here to talk about Rickles. <laughs> This young man, this illegitimate son of Heinrich Himmler. Why are we giving this white panther a dinner? Why is he sitting up here with all of us biggies? You can use it. It's the only man that Gentle Ben ever bit. This is the only man that Gentle Ben ever bit. This is the only man <laughs> that Gentle Ben ever did. This is the only man that Gentle Jen ever did. <laughs> but I will say, ladies and gentlemen, that recently Don has had some very good luck in the movies. Ooh. He found a wallet under his seat. <laughs> I saw the picture, Kelly's Heroes, that you made in, in Czechoslovakia. Oh, it was Hugo. Oh, Hugo, Hugo. That was his first name, Yugoslovakia. And, uh, and that's the picture. It was part of our cultural exchange, the picture he made. We sent them Rickles, and they sent us a stag movie of Oscar Homolka. I think, though, I think uh, that I have put... Uh, him down enough tonight. Let's let's be fair. You never heard about the nice things that Don does. Because Don doesn't do nice things. <laughs> so in conclusion, Don, may I say about our guest of honor, ladies and gentlemen, you show me one person who doesn't like Don Rickles, and I'll show you your average American. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to hear from the guest of honor. Oh, good, oh, good night. Oh, good although day. we've been kidding him uh, for the past 50, 55 minutes, very good naturedly, he is, uh, he's been called a great humanitarian. That is, if you take the words of the Krupp family. <laughs> I would like you to meet our guest of honor. And tonight, Kraft does salute Don Rickles. And it's only fitting that a cheese company would sponsor a dinner for a rat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present most affectionately, Mr. Don Rickles. Ladies and gentlemen, many exciting nights in my career. Tonight I will not count. (laughs) I would like to say good evening. They have... Good evening is rolling. (laughs) Kraft Music Hall has been kind enough to honor me tonight 
I've asked for a dais, and unfortunately, I got guys that were happen to be in the neighborhood. <laughs> there were three whiners hanging out in the highway, going, "Hey, hey how about hey?" <laughs> they washed them up and put them here. <laughs> but I kid. First of all, we'll go from left to right. Dick Cavett, I, I say this honestly. I was on ABC, and I'm fed up with them as I'm fed up with you. <laughs> you have a wonderful nighttime show opposite Merv Griffin and my dear friend Johnny Carson, and they plan to beat you up. <laughs> and why, Dick? Because you're catching on. Here's an old guy, eight years on the air, this man, Johnny Carson, sitting to my right. He said to me, beat him up. <laughs> I say to you, Dick, really, you wrote for Johnny Carson, and today you have your own show on another network opposite this man, and you're hurting him. <laughs> now that, to some people, doesn't sound like humor. And I can tell by the reaction. Sure doesn't to me. <laughs> sure doesn't to you. Young Seven Dick. years ago, you were hanging around ABC with a little game show going, eh, eh, hit the buzzer and win a trip. <laughs> And I was a contestant. No, he was the buzzer. <laughs> Look at this. Had a whole day has turned on me. <laughs> and it's true. What's true? Ah, shut it. <laughs> Any once in a while, move your lip. <laughs> How many big stars do I know wear the clip-on bow tie with the little rust on the shirt? <laughs> But I say tonight, my dear friends, <laughs> and I quote the words of a great man, a great prophet, Eliezer, who said, if I love thyself, thy be on it at thy dinner. Thy dinner be thee. This I know, thyself. I gotta get this thing fixed. <laughs> To you, George C. Scott, I skip you, Milton, because you are my idol. I say from my heart, George C. Scott, as Patton, you made a fool of yourself. George C. Scott stood on the screen in the great emotional picture starring George C. Scott and Carl Malden, who you objected to. When you remember when you called me and said, why is he on the screen? I could play his part and do it great. And he stood there. That's right, Alan. Laugh your way to stardom. Your wife is leaving you. But I said, hey, George, I'm talking. And I kid him about Pat. And I predict he will win an Academy Award. I'll step out on a limb. No, no, no. What is this, a luncheon? George C. Scott, who said in that great scene, I'll never forget it, when all the men, listen! You can learn, George! <laughs> Sitting here tonight like you're Moses? You're so great, make the crowd disappear. I don't know who you are, kid in the front, but you're getting on my nerves. <laughs> I just saw a little kid with a drip-dry shirt with no stay in the collar. What's your name, kid? Take your time. What's your name? Wrong! <laughs> What's your last name, Jim? You better answer me or the general will wipe you off! <laughs> What's your last name, Jim? Take your time. Look on your underwear, maybe it's stencil. What's your last name, Jim? What? Jim Mulholland? I'm in the business 20 years. I don't have a joke for a dumbbell that's named Mulholland. What are you, a road? Hope you make a left and go right into yourself. But to you, George C. Scott, I say from my heart, 
Don't wave the flag of surrender. You are a big star. Be secure. Tell these people what you told me before the show went on. You don't need this. You are a big man, and you're a great artist. I quote the words of John Barrymore, the late, great John Barrymore, who said, Let the light leave the spot to thyself. Let thyself be thy spot. You know what worries me? George C. Scott's going there. That's true. And to you, Henny Youngman, I say from my heart, you're old. You gotta be put in a home, you're gonna hurt somebody. Can't sit in the room and rock away with the farina spoon going, wow! And then there is a man named Alan King. And Alan King is a great valedictorian. Is that the word? I ask you like you know. <laughs> Alan King, who said to me in his beautiful country estate, notice how the hunting dogs bite your wife. <laughs> He's the type that hangs around a health club and wants to pull off your towel. <laughs> Is this too fast for you, Mulholland? <laughs> Why did I put one dumbbell right in the front? I'm rolling, and this kid's going, I pull off the towel. <laughs> Engine room, one third ahead. <laughs> You're laughing, yeah, John? And Chet Huntley just took your wallet. Uh, I didn't forget you, Milton. Don't be depressed. <laughs> Milton's sitting there going, he forgot me. <laughs> and then don't forget the king. You're the greatest living comedian of our time. <laughs> did, did he buy that? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Look at the police officer from New York City watching the show. When you get a chance, check the city. <laughs> Standing there going, oh, I'm, I'm a cop. <laughs> and the women go, Where's my purse? The cop's in the show, check with him. <laughs> I kid you, officer. My luck, this will be the dummy that stops me outside. All right, let's hear it again, fella. <laughs> let's hear that joke about the cop watching the show. <laughs> my dear friends, we come to Chet Huntley. Good night, David. Good night, Chet. You're boring. <laughs> Chet, what is your heritage? Irish? Scotch. Scotch. You're cheap. <laughs> Tell me one thing. You're a Scotchman and be proud of it. When you march, what, what's under the kilt? <laughs> I quote the words of a great Scotchman, uh, Harry Arman. <laughs> George C. Scott went, Harry Herman? <laughs> he said, I do not care where you come from, but if the Highland come from the crate, the crate come from the Highland. True. <laughs> it's true? <laughs> I mean, you can work. <laughs> Chet, seriously, good luck in your retirement. You have been a great asset to the news. Really, you have. And you're the only one I will be serious about because you've done great things. You've brought the public honesty which we need in America today. And I thank you for that on behalf of all of us. <laughs> Last but not least, Johnny Carson. Oh. <laughs> Before I speak of Milton. Johnny Carson said to me, make me last. Make a big fuss over me. Who cares what happens to Milton? And Milton, he's right, who cares? 
Uh, Johnny Carson gave me my start in television on the late night shot, and I'm very grateful to you. Johnny, I, I say this from my heart. I've been proud of you, and I've enjoyed working with you. And I say this very honestly. Don't ever hang around me. <laughs> I'll be with you now. I didn't forget you, Mel. And last but not least, one of the great troopers, the man that was around with all the greats, Sophie Tucker, rest her soul, Al Jolson, Eddie Cantor, and just recently worked with the great Harry Lyman. <laughs> but this wonderful man, Milton Berle, came up to me and said, I'm Milton Berle, a great star, a great performer. And I said, I know, and he tapped for me. Top dance about an hour and a half. I said, go away, old man. <laughs> Milton, you're a great star. I spoke to the Will Rogers home, and we have your room. <laughs> but I kid about Milton Burrell. Really. There are many great artists. And we all know this. Not to be uh, maudlin, is that the word? Choose. Good, I'll, I'll, I'll buy that. <laughs> Not to be maudlin or hepatitis. Oh, that, that's hepatitis. Ah, who cares? <laughs> I say to you, Milton. What do I say to Milton? <laughs> but I say to good night, Milton. But what I say to you, Milton, there are many great performers. I thank you, Milton, for starting me and making me feel important because that is so beautiful. And you're a great artist and a great showman. I mean that. Now. <laughs> to all of you and to Craft Music Hall, to Mr. Johnny Carson and to the wonderful guests on the dais, to you people in the world of television, thank you for making me feel a little bit important. But I promise you, I will not let it go to my head and forget my values. Thank you.